Well, Sadie, thanks for doing this. Uh, th this this was uh, thanks thanks for saying yes because while there is no demand from the public for a guitar instructional video from Chavez, there is a demand from Matador Records to to promote the reissue of our first record, Gone Glimmering, which came out 35 years ago today. Happy birthday. Thank you. And I'm glad that we have a, to have a record that's 45 years old still be relevant enough for us to unsolicitedly, unsolicitedly talk about it is exciting. It's just crazy that a record my grandparents listen to is yeah. one that I get to learn the songs from today. Yeah, I'm glad that we were able to preserve uh, folk, ancient folkways the way that we were doing it. I tried my very best to suss out some parts from some YouTube videos of you playing at Parkside Lounge, which is oh. a show I went to. Ooh! Thought maybe I'd see myself being a loser in the in the front. I did not. <laughs> uh, that show know, was a little so hard to pick out the audio. So it was really loud. I remember yes. that show being like punishing, really punishing. Um, it was loud. I I got the set list. Nice. It's uh, sitting downstairs in my basement <laughs> in, a, in a prominent studio way. Okay. Well, Sadie, do you, yes. do, you, do you want, do you want to ask us how we do what, what we do? Cause we'll show you. I, we're sitting here. I mean, if you insist, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got some, I've got some sort of specific E questions, but I feel like something we should start with letting everyone know. Is it, what are you guys tuned to today? Well, Clay. we started with, uh, we do a lot of the songs from the first record with a, a low A. So it's a drop A tune. <laughs> and it's really kind of stupid. Stupid sounding. It doesn't quite stay in tune, but it's sort of heavy and fun. That's a that's a Chavez song. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The riff was trying to make the most of like the lowest and the highest I I could come up with in the same. Yeah. Riff. So show me how you do that one. It's it's just it's just it's just. It's just that interval is the 11th fret on the D string, right? And then you go to right. just a string. Which is and, that, and, and, and Clay, are you bending up? So, so where, where's... Cause I, because since I've never... We had mentioned this to Sadie, but for anybody else who, who cares, Clay and I have never told each other what we're playing, so um, no interest in each other's personal lives. No, well, no, well I mean, well, yeah, I, I, truthfully, no interest at all. But the idea was like, I guess it was unspoken, but the idea was like more, more listening and reactive. I mean, we play a lot of the same stuff at the same time too, but generally, the idea was that was that we're bouncing off of things, yeah. and and uh, so that with that in mind, Clay, when you do the. I, I'm, I'm, are you on the 11th? Is this, on is this finger frame. on the 11th fret? I'm on the 10th. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, Sadie, you want to try it? Right, yeah. I always did it on the 11th fret. <laughs> 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 really? It should be played standing up. It's sort of hard to <laughs> play it sitting down. I was trying to suss through some of these last night, and I think I tried to make all of them harder than they are. I was. Going They're out. really simple. When I went back to relearn Chavez songs after we hadn't played in a while, we had to play shows. I had recalled because whatever everything is was difficult for me in my twenties, I guess, but like. Singing and playing was difficult, and writing songs was difficult. Everything's difficult, so I expected all this shit to be really difficult. And then when I went back to it, I was like, Clay's parts are really difficult, but mine are, well, or can be difficult and have stretches. Mine are not. 
that, that that's one thing that I realized. I, I try to find the easiest way to play. But the next part is definitely part of that tuning, that heavy tuning, which is... Like you get as sludgy as you can possibly get in that. You've got like a high note ringing through yeah, on there. What, what's uh, the shape of it? This is just the standard. And then it's the, these two. Uh, a B and an E flat. See, I didn't know you did any of that shit. Gives it a little ringy thing that Matt has never heard. It really is more fun to play standing up. I can't, it's like, it should be like, you know, hitting low, high, low, high. You gotta get it all the way down there. Weird, it should be. That was another thing that I noticed from having from having to, to, to re-examine Chavez stuff is we found all these old videos from 1995. And because I'm always too busy trying to sing or play, I never, I would, and also I couldn't look at Scott, the bass player, because I would always start laughing. <laughs> and then I'd be too busy to look at, Clay, just because I was too busy, but but the uh, Clay, I was very impressed with your physicality, and also Clay's arms are really long. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, give us a show. He, he was a professional basketball player. Look long point. to me. Yeah, and so so it seems to me that a lot of his guitar playing style has something to do with trying to stretch his fingers yeah. and arms out. We'll get to that. stretch on tour. Generally, the Chavez thing was is like start with something stupid, get really, really lost, and then figure out a convincing way to get back to the stupid part. Yes, That's, yes. I looked back at the um, interview I did with you guys for Vice a couple years ago, mm. and you mm-hmm. you told me about these tunings, and somehow I forgot until emailing you at eleven p.m. last night. But um, I think maybe Clay said that tuning down to A opened up some intervals you hadn't expected before or used and I feel like Ghost by the Sea is a really good example of that. And also, that's a song that I love because I literally don't have to play anything. (laughs) So I would just uh, do this. That's uh, the sixth fret. Where are you, seven? Six, six, six low, seven. Six on the low A, seven on the the uh, the high A. And then I have to. I always love to. I know. I'm kind of bummed that I'm learning this. I always love that I never. Yeah. And then I this one. This one is a pain in the ass. Yeah, this is one where I'm like, what is the, the fret span on this part? This bass, whatever uh, pickup, is set low, so I could do a soft volume, and then I have this. This one is like completely full on, so that when I hit the overdrive, it works. It's such a bad idea because I have to hit the switch. So you're doing both of these parts. Yeah. And then I have. Yeah, I, don't I always figured this was Matt butting no. in with the no. that note. I'm really amazing. No. And so, but then I have to. 
hit the switch and switch to the harmonic and hit the pedal at the same time, but it never works. So show me that acrobatic move. It never works. <laughs> I can't do it sitting down. That was my one chance to really shine and just take my sweet time <laughs> and just like step up to the corner of the stage and just. I didn't have to worry. That hard part was over. So I got to relax and just do that. And then we would slowly, I would slowly speed up. And at a certain point, it would be the right rhythm. And then I'd throw a glance to James and he would start clicking it off. So it was just. Mm -hmm. Or do you just play in the A there? It's just the harmonic. It's just the harmonic here. I do a good move that I, it's not quite the Kim file, but I saw Kim file pull it off. You know, this one. And I, I do oh. the. Uh, I that's, like that that's where we all build up to when I hit when I move from the fifth fret to the twelfth fret just in time that's when everyone else kicks in then the real stretching begins so what's the real stretching well first it's the heaviest riff that we've like ever written which is like you do This A. So what are you doing there? Yeah, what is that? You know that. So, so you keep your fingers there the whole. Or your your yeah. pinky and your ring finger are sitting there. You know that. Got this real pretty. Yes. On the uh, okay. seven. And then, so it's highly distorted. So you Yeah, the, the, the other thing about that riff, and I'll just shut up about it, but you can hit the arm up you, before you hit the... Yeah, you have to have your arm up. Clay doesn't really windmill, he more sort of... Raises my uh, hand. High five? Signals. Raise. Signals, okay. yeah. Then what do you do? Me? Yeah. Oh, I go, uh... <laughs> Shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, something so totally. I, I cool. would just do the I'll just do the bottom thing. I would make it as easy as possible and go. And then I think for the for the I would generally go. And that's when you would open up. Or and then yeah. And then and I kind of do it in different places, so I, so it would probably start there. Then the second time I'd probably go. Then probably the third time I go. That was good. That's, that's, every time we repeat, I'd move higher on the neck, I suppose. I would just try to get as nasty as I could. The fuck is that? Wait, it's the same that? thing. It's a it was really frightening. It scared the kids. And then this is where the real stretch happens, which is. Like, So it's like, it's like, it becomes stupid. And then once we do the, does that make sense, Sadie? Oh, shit. I'm also looking at you guys backwards, which is not helping my brain. <laughs> James comes in, it's, that's just like a D chord with B, and then on the G and B. And, and you sort of do something similar to that, right? 
Me? I, I, I just go. Yeah. my switch again but at this point it's easy what do you do at the end yeah I would do 7 10 open it's, yeah. quite a, it's an epic jam of A so I wasn't wrong in, in thinking that the fret reach was tremendous yes. Uh, you you are correct. Uh, I, yes, I'm 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 offended by yeah. how stretchy it is. But you never go lower than that. So it's a it's a it's a five fret stretch clay, right? Yes. Yeah, I think that's the hardest to go. I do it in uh, break up your band right. as well. I was going to ask about that next, and I'm specifically curious about it because Matt, you don't, you, you do all, you're like me, you're a finger player, yeah? Right, yeah. Well, that yeah, I mean, hard I hard to do without a pick. No, I mean, I, at this point, I could do it without a pick. Back then, I think I did it with a pick, but it's just, you know, now I just go. Or actually, I mean, you just go. I mean, you just pretend that you have a pick. How do you guys no. do that? Yeah, show me where you are. You play the 12th fret on the B string, so it's a B. And you play it ringing with the high E. The high E is open. Uh, and go. then you're, pick, you're picking off the F on the high E string, so it's like... And then stretch it into the B again. You've got your first finger on the 12th fret of the B string. You're yeah, hammering I'm... on on the 13th fret on the E on the string 13th, with your yes. second finger. Yes. And what? Third finger is on the third 15th finger. fret on the yes. G. And then that. So... Yeah, so so yeah, so Sadie, the it's basically right. The, that that's that's the sort of shape of your fingers, right? And then the rhythm is uh. Down down strokes. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you yeah, on yeah. The, the 14th fret or the 15th fret? I do 15th, Clay. What do you do for the band? What? Oh. Oh. See, no, I do that. I, I make it easier so I don't have to yeah. try as hard. I go. <laughs> you guys are also tuned down lower than me. You might have a heavier gauge on here than I do. I have way stupidly heavy gauge. These little baby strings. Oh, yeah. It's true. I have, uh, yeah, also Clay uses a very heavy bottom string for his A, right? Yeah, I, I use like a 58 or 60 sometimes. There you go. Yeah, but we played the same yeah. thing, and then the the little pre-bridge thing, it's just that same 11th fret on the D string for an A. Oh, I see. open A and then we're back into it and then we open up on the A second time and they sort of do the we do all those oh right because you don't do the riff Scott the bass does the riff that's what I'm trying to get you see what you see was like Sadie I don't know what Clay's talking about I have no idea I think 
around with. And then we go to the bridge, which is, I do this, uh... You, you come in with Scott. Oh, right, that move. I do that, too. I do it. So what are you doing so there? I, these are just... It's the on the G string, the fourth fret, and uh, the E string, the fourth fret. And then I slide up to the high. I don't do that oh, part, cool. right? That's what the bass does, right? It's it's a three part phrase. So the first phrase is. What are you doing when you slide down to the fourth fret? I, I, don't, high, like, I, the... I don't play that part because it's too stupid. Okay, to thank God. But then the second time I do play, which is. I know you guys have chord shapes you go back to. Yeah. This is where it gets stupid because I get up to where the frets are farther apart. It's that same, the same thing that I establish and play around with it here, right? And then in the and just keep it, but slow it. So you got, what, pinky on the sixth fret of the E, the yeah. high E? Right. First fingers on the second fret of the lowest A. What's filling this out? We got a third finger on the fourth fret of the D? So yeah, it's like, it's the two. With stretching that by getting to stop playing while Scott plays an E and sort of echoes the original guitar part. Which is uh, seven, seven fret, eighth fret, fourth fret, thirteenth fret, right? Do you under the. Yeah. 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 See, yeah, the whole thing about Chavez was nobody knew what the other guy was doing. Clearly. Because what I was doing is sort of stupid. That's insane, Clay. I don't know what's wrong with you. Really dumb. 